Hi, this is Dr. Rhonda Falheim. Up to this point, we've been talking about nonspecific resistance. We're going to shift gears a little bit, and we're going to talk about adaptive immunity. Now, we do refer to adaptive immunity as specific resistance, and you will definitely pick up on that specificity component uh, as you make your way through the material that we've provided. There are three characteristics that we can attribute to adaptive immunity that will always be there. Specificity, and what we're talking about there is actually recognition of the foreign substance um, so that, two, we launch an attack that's targeting that specific substance. Um, and then three, we're going to have a memory of both of these activities, what happened here and we will then put that memory to use. So uh, you will see that we do address these three characteristics as we're moving through adaptive immunity. <clears throat> the types of cells that we'll primarily be talking about um, are lymphocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells. Lymphocytes, as you know, are a type of, a type of leukocyte and they consist of T lymphocytes or T cells, B lymphocytes or B cells, and uh, natural killer cells. The natural killer cells uh, actually act in a nonspecific manner and so they were addressed earlier. So you're going to get very, very familiar with uh, both uh, categories of lymphocytes We'll talk about macrophages, which are, of course are phagocytes in the tissue, and we will also talk about dendritic cells, which are uh, special types of macrophages in the skin. I want to I want I want to talk about lymphocytes for just a minute um, because it, it sort of helps to lay some groundwork about where they're coming from and how they're getting to the point where we are now. We know that lymphocytes are made in the red bone marrow, but um, the T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes start out with different destinations. The T lymphocytes uh, will leave the red bone marrow and go to the thymus, the thymus gland. Now we're going to talk about the thymus gland in lab, but <coughs> I think it's important that you understand what happens at the thymus for these T cells. I kind of think about the thymus as being like a finishing school for these T cells. Uh, they go to the thymus and before they can leave and go out into the body, into the system, they have to acquire what's called immunocompetence. Immunocompetence. And what that means is that they need to be able to readily recognize the difference between self cells, meaning my cells or your cells, and the cells of some foreign substance or um, foreign being, body, whatever, like a cancer cell or a, um, a bacteria or virus. Um, they have to be able to, to recognize the difference. And so it's very, very important because, you know, with with adaptive immunity, uh, we're going to you know launch some pretty brutal attacks with our immune system cells, our lymphocytes, and so very important that these T lymphocytes are capable of differentiating between self cells and other, um, and so that occurs at the thymus. Um, after after they acquire immunocompetence they then leave the thymus and go out into lymphatic tissue, set up their little camps and houses and everything and make their homes there, um, meaning the you know lymph nodes, the diffuse lymphatic tissue, um, and the other tissues that we talk about in the lymphatic system. So T lymphocytes have to make that detour. B lymphocytes go directly to that lymphatic tissue and set up their colonies. Okay, so uh, that's just something important to keep in mind as we go through uh, adaptive immunity. Now there's two types of adaptive immunity. 
cell-mediated immunity, and humoral immunity. Okay. What I'm going to explain on on the slides that are, um, you know, following here, are some things that are important for you to understand in order to understand either one of these processes and and or both of them. So I will then, in other videos, explain each of these specifically. But um, but first, there are some some concepts that are shared between the two that I think are very important to look at. First, when we talk about adaptive immunity, uh, it's important that we define an antigen. And so an antigen is the foreign substance that we're going to launch an attack against. But um, by definition, an antigen actually has the ability to provoke a specific immune response. Okay, so um, along with this, when we talk about antigens, we, we may use the word epitope. Epitope, and as you can see, um, other, uh, other words for that are antigenic determinant. Well, an epitope is just that part of the antigen that allows us to identify specifically which antigen that is. So that's what allows us to recognize the antigen, that the, an the epitope. Next, very important to understand what an antigen presenting cell is. Okay? And this APC stands for antigen presenting cell. So I'm going to refer to it as an APC from now on. Antigen presenting cell. Hmm. Okay. And primarily the antigen presenting cells that we'll talk about in adaptive immunity are the macrophages, dendritic cells, and B cells. When we look at what's happening here, we do understand that macrophages and dendritic cells are um, capable of, of uh, phagocytosis. Well, the B cells, as we will learn when we talk about specific immunity for B cells, and, and I will bring this back up again, um, they are capable of consuming an antigen. And so I, I will, like I said, bring that back up again and specifically talk about B cells in this process. So for now, I'm just going to focus primarily on macrophages and dendritic cells. So what they will do is um, actually consume the antigen. And you know they have all the uh, uh, lysosomes that are filled with um, enzymes that can tear down pretty much anything you know, biological. And so after consuming this antigen, they do indeed uh, break it into smaller, more harmless um, harmless pieces that are then discarded. However, um, as this process is occurring, this particular phagocyte will produce a protein that is then placed on the cell membrane. And we call that MHC. MHC protein. Okay. And really it's a pedestal. It's it's a little it's a little structure that's actually going to hold the epitope from this particular antigen that was consumed. All right, so now we have this epitope displayed on this pedestal called an MHC so that this macrophage or dendritic cell can now present that epitope to lymphocytes. And uh, and you know in in order to see whether recognition occurs so th those macrophages then you know w may move around in the diffuse lymphatic tissue they may get uh, into the um, lymphatic vessels and move through nodes uh, exposing this uh, structure this epitope that's displayed to lymphocytes Okay, um, and and uh, hoping that indeed somebody will recognize that, because this is just a re this is 
essentially this phagocytes running through being a red waving a red flag saying hey we've got this antigen in us we've got this antigen here and um, you know I need help we need to do something and launch an attack if it's a specific antigen that you recognize so um, that's the role of the APC keep in mind you know as we go through this we'll be talking about one cell that does this particular activity but in reality if there is one antigen in the body um, there are many many antigens of the same type that are presenting and so we're constantly dealing with multiple number of antigens and multiple um, many many of each All right so this is the antigen presenting cell and this is its job it's going to present um, the epitope on an MHC. Well, we have two different types of MHCs. An MHC, again, is major histocompatibility complex. All right, major histocompatibility complex. And again, it's just that pedestal that I was talking about, MHC. Well, we have two types of them. We have an MHC1, and what you'll see is that the MHC1 is only displayed on self cells self-cells, all right, meaning my cells, all my cells, all your cells, anybody's cells, but um, so epitopes will be displayed on self-cells in, in an MHC1. It's like, oh, my liver cell is displaying that, uh, is displaying an epitope, ooh, well, um, that would be in an MHC1 complex, all right. These can only be recognized by what we call cytotoxic T cells and you'll learn more about cytotoxic T cells very shortly. The other type of MHC is MHC2. Now that's displayed on all immune cells, meaning lymphocytes, macrophages, dendritic cells. Okay, They will all have MHC2 complexes and those are only going to be recognized by helper T cells. Again, you'll, you'll learn about them shortly. Okay, so two complexes. I'm going to stop there and we'll get a little more specific with each um, type of adaptive immunity in additional videos now.